this video we will learn how to paint these brightly lit Halloween pumpkins. The main thing about painting bright lights and bright reflections on shiny objects is the tonal range. I'm sure you've noticed that on a bright sunny day, if you turn on a light outside, you will basically not see it. But if you turn on a light bulb in the dark, it will shine very brightly. It's because there is a big contrast between the dark and the light. And that's what we need to have in our painting in order for those lights to really shine and the pumpkins to have all those bright highlights on their shiny surface. The light in my painting is white paper. I cannot go wider than that. I will use a little bit of white gouache to restore some areas because I didn't use masking, but that's as light as I can go. So to create that contrast that I need between light and dark, I need to go really dark on the background at least on certain areas of the background, but also the pumpkins need to be very saturated. They don't have to be dark, but they need to have enough color on them so they don't look pale. And so they create contrast with those bright reflections of light on the surface. If I don't have that contrast between the surface of the pumpkin and the highlight, the highlight will just disappear. So as usual with watercolor painting, I start with the um, light and I start with the object color. So I'm adding yellows and several shades of orange to the pumpkins and to the background. And my next steps would be to paint core shadows on the pumpkins with a more saturated darker shade of orange and then I will paint cast shadows in the background with cool colors that will create the illusion of a three-dimensional object on a flat sheet of paper and it also will create the dark cool background will create the illusion of space on the flat sheet of paper. I kind of started painting around those faces on the pumpkins but then it occurred to me that once I add cool color mixture on those areas I can easily cover the yellows and oranges that I'm using on the pumpkins themselves so I don't really have to paint around anything so I'm covering the whole pumpkin with orange and then I will paint the face on top of it. So my main concern for now is preserving those three bright lights in the background as white paper. Those grooves on the pumpkins are a little confusing. I don't think I'm locating them in exactly the places where they are in the reference photo, but it's no big deal. I think they will look okay. Okay, it's time to start working on the background. I'm using mineral violet, it's a cool purple, as well as some cool green, Cascade Green by Daniel Smith. And I think I'm going to show the stems on the pumpkins as well, so they just, I don't accidentally paint over those areas. They're pretty light, so I need to work around them a little bit. I started painting the face of the pumpkin with Antwerp blue but it's too early I need to work on the form a little more so I'm going to wipe this off and I'll let my painting dry okay the pumpkins lightened quite a bit well everything lightened quite a bit after watercolor dried as usual so I'm going to add more pigment to the pumpkins to show the form and I'm going to work on showing those grooves a little better so they look more true to form. And I'm working now around those bright yellow lights that I applied because I don't want them to darken. I want them to be light. I'm basically applying color directly out of my pans and my brush is damp but I don't have very much water on the brush. That's the only way to achieve saturated color because once we start diluting it and mixing on the palette it becomes too much water and watercolor will look very pale unless that's the that's the tone that you need in your painting but i need very saturated colors in mine so i'm working directly out of the palette
The stems on the pumpkins are not flat, so I need to show some coarse shadows on them as well with more saturated greens. And now I'm going to darken my background as well. I switched the flat brush. It holds even more pigment than a round brush. And that way I can drop quite a bit of pigment in those areas. And once it dry, hopefully I will get the range of tone that I need. And it's not all cool colors around the light. You see it has, the lights have kind of like a warm halo around them. So I'm adding warm colors around white paper that's my brightest light and then cooler colors blues purples and greens further away from them to create the illusion of the depth of space and of the light and since i have some cool colors on my brush i can also show those little cast shadows in the grooves of the pumpkins I lost the highlight there, so I'm going to scrub out some paint with a stiff brush. Very easy with good watercolor paper to bring back the highlights. And let's work on the background on this side, doing the same thing. Warm colors around the light and then cooler colors further away from the light. And flat brush is also good it really works for showing the texture. There's like a haystack behind those pumpkins. So flat brush helps me to show the texture of the background, not just the color and the tone. And you can see that at this stage, the painting is starting to take shape. The background starts to recede and the pumpkins become more three-dimensional and the lights really start to shine because we're starting to achieve that tonal range that I was telling you about in the beginning of the video. Okay, I'll let everything dry. It lightened a little bit, so I might have to darken some areas just a bit, but we will see. Now, what I want to work on are the faces of the pumpkins. I'm switching to a small flat brush, so I have a little more control. I have um, a very cool blue mixture, very intense color. And because I'm painting on an orange surface, the colors neutralize each other, and I am getting very dark, almost black color on the faces. And what's most important, it's a cool dark color, so the cutouts on the pumpkins will push back. And I can still work on the overall form of the pumpkin as well, so adding some more saturated colors in core shadows. Really trying to show that the pumpkins have grooves and also that they're round objects. And the dark color will never come to the very edge of a round object. There will be always a little bit of reflected light because it slides along the form and the edges will always be lighter on a round object than the middle. So that's why I left that little sliver of yellow on the side of the pumpkin. If I bring dark color to the very edge, it will flatten out my pumpkin. Okay, little cast shadows with a small brush. They need a little reinforcement. It's going to be very dark between the pumpkins. And I also want to bring my dark background all the way to the stem so the stem stands out a little more. And 
and now let's work on the other pumpkin on the face again very intense mixture of blue basically directly out of the pan flat brush and painting on top of yellow and orange background neutralizes the color those faces on the pumpkins after they dry will lighten so i will have to add more pigment i already can see it they're not going to be dark enough even though i'm working pretty dark but it's no big deal i can add more pigment later and i'm going to do the same thing on the second pumpkin i'm going to darken the core shadows to make it more three-dimensional the middle will always be a little bit darker than the edges where the light slides around the round form And the last thing I'm going to do, my background is a little too cool, so I'm going to do a little yellow wash around the lights to give them warm glow. Now it's time to paint the highlights. White Artist Gouache. I'm using a small brush i'm going to add those bright highlights on the pumpkins but not all of them are the same brightness some of them are not as bright so i'm going to adjust the brightness of gouache with a little bit of um, yellow watercolor that i'm going to mix with gouache these two materials have the same binder so artist gouache can be mixed with watercolor as you probably saw in a lot of videos on my channel and speaking of my channel i will be working on several more paintings similar to this one where there is a play of shining light against dark background there will be several more of those so let me know in comments if you're interested in this subject matter and if you would like to see more videos like this one about painting light and dark so i will know that i need to produce those videos and also please subscribe to the channel and click the little bell button so you will be notified when i post new videos i try to do that every week so you will always have something new to watch all right my painting is done here are my halloween pumpkins with their bright lights i think they turned out a little cuter than they were in the reference photo let me know in comments if you agree with me that mine have cuter smiles than the reference photo thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you in the next one here in tamarab studio